not the best location. But he had to hide from the enemy so that when he finished it, they wouldn't take it. Amen. 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 In verse 12, it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And if you follow it through, I need someone to talk to me today. You follow it through, it says, Gideon was not, you know, Gideon was considered a coward. Amen. Amen. So now the angel is telling him that he's a mighty man of valor. So I can imagine Gideon being a little confused here. You know, he's hiding out from the enemy. And so God, uh, you know, he can tell what we think of ourselves is not what God looks at, the way God looks at us. Amen. Praise the Lord, D. Yes, sir. Praise him. Yes. Uh, the, 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 here in the book of Judges, the, the people of God were back and forth from serving God and of course, God raised up people to come and other come, other people to come and oppress them because of their disobedience. And now we hear where Midian is taking the Midianites are coming and they're oppressing the people of God. And and Joash is hiding out, uh, trying to keep what he could have. Uh, he did all that work, harvest the wheat, sift the wheat, shake the wheat, and then they come take 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 it after he done all that. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying to trying to do that. And but. But the Bible said that God came and saw what he was doing. God saw that, that Gideon was trying to provide, trying to do what was right. And God now wants to raise him up to do something greater. And um, as we see here, God uses people who are doing something. Amen. You know, that's very important because, you know, you, God, you know, you're not doing nothing. A lot of times God doesn't use you. But here he is doing something. And now God picks up on what he's doing, sends an angel to speak a word of encouragement to him. And uh, to me, I mean, to, to, to uh, Gideon, 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 amen, hiding behind the wine press, hiding from the Midianites. There we go. Amen. 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 Very good point from Patrick. That you see that God uses people that are doing something, and that gives me an indication of, uh, of us. Amen. You know, we're doing stuff, and, you know, and God uses us. He gives us the strength to do things that I personally didn't think we could do. And I won't elaborate on yesterday, but <laughs> but God helps us because He knows that we're our heart. Is. Amen. 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 So true. Any, anything you want to add to that, Deacon Mary, Deacon Boom? Now on verse thirteen, and it's now this is uh, what I say, and Gideon. Questions the, questions the Lord. And it says, Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then did all this befall us? And where be all his miracles which our father told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Now, <clears throat> this, is, this is typical of us. When things are not going the way we want to, we to seem to want to complain and, and question God. But when I read in the Bible, you know, it says his ways are not our ways and, yeah. and, and, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. Yeah. And it's kind of like, and I'm going to let everyone talk, but it kind of like reminds me of what's going on now with the virus. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone wants to question that. But, you know, it, it's not about questioning it. It's about uh, God, you know, it could have been worse. Right. Could have been worse for me. I mean, it has not hit me. And if it does hit me, I'm going to praise it. Because I've lived a long life. Amen. But we seem to want to criticize. And I was listening to something today saying that if God answered all our promises, there would be no need for us to pray. Because everything that we wanted would just be, you know, hey, hey, God would just give it to us. But sometimes it doesn't happen exactly the way we want. Amen. Deacon, boom. No, I, I was just saying, a lot of times things don't happen the way we, we really want them. Want it to happen. And, it, and if we're praying to God, God is a good God and, a, and, a, and he respects and loves man. He knows what we can bear. He knows the inside of us. He knows our hearts. He, and a lot of times we pray for more than what we can handle and what more than what we can bear. And he's going to give us what we can bear and what we can handle. Also, if we're continually praying and communicating with God, 
we can understand some of the things that we're going through and some of the things that the world is going through, Amen. knowing that God is sufficient regardless of what the circumstances are. Amen. 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 I like what Deacon Boom says. A lot of times we pray for more than what we can bear. And uh, kind of reminds me of me. I told everyone probably yesterday when I was in the Marine Corps, I always wanted to be a sergeant. The Lord made me a sergeant. And so it made me a sergeant and I, uh, I was patrolled and I, I got everybody lost. And uh, we was ended up in an area that I could have got everybody killed, which was in a, a live firing area where they was at the qualifying on the rifle range. And so now I don't want to be in charge no more. So I'm trying to find someone that, and, you know, Lord, get me out of this. And I can just hear him say, then you say that's what you want? Okay. I gave it to you. Amen. So basically, we've got to be careful. You know, and so here we are questioning God, but we can't question God. We just have to praise God for what He's doing because, you know, I read where someone uh, prayed, was complaining about God, they fell off a ladder and said, The Lord told them, See, now I could have taken you out. Lord, help me. So don't complain about what's going on, even if I take one of your loved ones. I could have took you too. Right. Any comments on that, Deacon? Uh, Mary. Yes. So, oh, man. so when I was thinking about, uh, when I was going through the scripture, even as you look at it, uh, what Gideon was going through, so many times we, you know, if we take it from a natural route, we all, you know, you hear folks, like you said, when they complain and, and say, well, what is this? What about that? You know, where, where's your God now? But then you look, then you look at it, if you looked at your life and all you've already been through, that's what, that's what the word here is saying. Haven't I brought you out of Egypt? Didn't I do all this for you already? So, so even though you're in a situation right now that, that it doesn't seem to be going in your favor, look what I have already done for you. Look all of, at all the things that I've pulled you out of. And so when we think about our own natural lives right now, how many of us can sit here and say, how many chances God gave us? We couldn't even count up the cost right now. We couldn't count it up. And so even if we lose faith at times or our faith wavers, we got to continue to remember, look what God has already done for me. Look all the things that he has carried me through. Amen. Very good point, you know, uh, Deacon uh, Mary. And if we just sit back and look at all the grace and everything that God has given us, you know, we cannot even count it because I should have been gone a long time ago. Man, I just want to thank God. And I was just thinking also about what, what was said is that when we really look down into the real reason why he was questioning God is the reason that they were in that situation was because of disobedience, disobedience. From, from the beginning. So, <laughs> but we're going to point the finger at someone else for something that we did. So we, uh, when Pastor said last one, let, let he cast the first stone that is in this. Let him cast the first stone. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that would be none of us to do that. Amen. Anyone else have any comment? You deacon? Pastor Brown, anyone else? No, I'm good. Okay, number 14. I'm going to ask Deacon uh, Mary to read that one for me. 14 and 15. Amen. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the land, from the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Least in my father's house. Uh -huh. oh, 14, uh, basically, uh, and uh, what I was reading is that God is telling him, go with what you got, and I will be there. And Gideon, you know, he still got, you know, what pastor say, oh, ye a little faith. Mm -hmm. But, but he, pastor, go ahead, pastor. Yeah, you go ahead, Deacon, finish up. You go ahead, and I'll talk but to you. He sure. was letting him know that he was going to be there with him. Regardless of what, and that's a great feeling, you know, I mean, homeboys, they always tell you they're going to be there with you, but they ain't there with you. <laughs> right. So, okay, pastor. Yeah, praise him. <laughs> he made me my thought, yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, Gideon was looking at looking at his natural situation. Right. He's looking at he's looking at what could he offer the Lord. And when he looked at what he had, he said, "Lord, I got nothing to offer." 
And um, what Gideon really is doing is, is that he's showing us really our true offer to God. We really got nothing off of God. Yep. Amen. We don't have. A, that's why the psalmist says, "What shall I render unto the Lord for all His benefits unto me?" Amen. But what, when I start looking around, thinking about it, I got nothing. Mm-hmm. If God hasn't already given it to me, so and so, what what we have to see is is that that is where God wants us to be at. Yep. That's where God wants us to be. Amen. Where 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 now He under, where we know, praise God, that we didn't do it, but if anything happens. God's going to handle it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Very good point. Praise the Lord. If anything happens, God is going to happen. Amen. Also, they found in verse 13, he talks about um, the miracles. And so, so Gideon knew something about God. He had heard something about the Lord. And, and he was trying to find where was it at and see it. It almost as if, as if, uh, y'all remember Thomas? Y'all remember yeah, Brother Thomas. Thomas. Y'all remember Brother Thomas? Brother Thomas. What did Brother Thomas say? Brother Thomas said, "I ain't gonna believe it until um, uh, uh, Jesus shows it. Until I put my hands until inside I touch it. and put my finger on it, Jesus said, here I am.' <laughs> 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 Praise God. So, so sometimes we have to be cautious about what we ask God. Because sometimes we ask God to do some things, and then He does it, and, and, and we're not like you said, we're not ready for it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to be a great preacher. I want this and that. And next thing you know, you get a ring, ring on the phone. Here it is. Amen. And then all of a sudden, you have to step into the plate knowing that it, God has to help you. And that's what I love about the Lord. I, what I love about God, I just want to talk, what I love about God is that He helps us. Amen. Amen. He helps us. Uh, he's, he, he, he uses the New Testament writer and says, when I, when my weak, when, uh, when I am weak, then he is strong, my God, and that 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 is such a wonderful statement that God speaks to our hearts today. Amen. Amen. Hey, good point. Anyone else have? We are in Judges. We are actually Judges chapter six. We are in verse thirteen and fourteen right now. Amen. And where Gideon is still uh, questioning. God, because we do that, because things will happen. People are doing that now, right now, uh, with the uh, virus and everything. They want to know why. We don't need to know why. And, if you can, boom. And, and also, put uh, the mic close to you, so everybody can hear you. Also, Gillian was uh, promised that God would be with him. And, and today we have. Uh, He's promised us never to leave us nor forsake us. Yes, sir. And and it's, the plan is still the same. Just that he was dealing with you know him individually, but now we all have the plan that God will never leave us or forsake us. And typically, He's never left us. Amen. He's been with us all the time. Very good point, Deacon. Well, God says He will never leave us or forsake us, and that is a great feeling to know that we have God with us all the time. Because I I know if you can think like I think I've been in some situations that I know the only person could have gotten me out of there was God. Mm-hmm. Everybody else they they, they could help me. Like when I was on that bomb, everybody stopped backing up. <laughs> Help us team out they gonna pray to tell my family what happened. They they had quit on me. God was still with me. God was still with you. Amen. Amen. Okay, with verse 15, is, and I'm going to read it, and he said unto him, O oh my Lord, where will shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. I am the least likely to succeed. And the Bible was saying that the sometimes, you know, most times we feel that the one that is chosen should be from a high, you know, a, you know wealthy, uh, prestigious background, but God, if He's saying I'm poor, and and uh, you know the Bible said He was poor, but it's not like you know He was trying to make excuses. You know Moses, you know He said, you know, you know I can't really speak. <laughs> Jeremiah said that uh, He was too young, Amen. But God, God can use anyone, Amen. You know uh, He used uh, Noah to build the ark. No one thought of that. So basically, well, what they're saying here is that just because your status or you this and that, 
God can use anyone to accomplish what he wants to uh, get done. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any comments on that? Praise the Lord. That deacon, that I see your hand. That's... I have a comment. Okay, Sister Sasha. Yes. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. I knew she was going to say something. Absolutely. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise, Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the house of the Lord today. Amen. You know, when Gideon said, um, and we do make excuses, right? But when Gideon said, oh, my family supports me, Manasseh, and this and that. Come on, y'all. We all do that to the Lord. We all have our baggage. But God said, I still got to work for you to do. Yes. Yes. You may be the poorest in, 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 in your tribe, but what does that have to do with the two are mutually exclusive? What does, that, what does any of that have to do with what I just asked you to do? I asked you to save Israel. If I want to use a job more than ask to do it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm asking you to be obedient. It has nothing to do with your status. We all need to remember that because we make excuses for ourselves. Come on now. <laughs> we do. And, and, and God's saying, but what you're saying has nothing to do with what I just asked you to do. I asked you to go and help that soul. What's it got to do with what you're going through right now? You go and help the soul like I asked you to do. We do that. Moses did it. Come on, y'all. It's human nature. Moses did it. Cain did it. I mean, think about it. We all do it. But Amen. God is saying, look past yourself. It's not about you right now. It's about what I'm asking you to do to save souls. And that's what he was doing. He was saving Israel. Amen. Very good point for Sister Simon. Mm -hmm. We all make it uses and, and God has to do something and I'm guilty because when the pastor was started talking about me being the deacon, I was looking around, hey, you got a whole lot of more people that can be a deacon. I'm trying to get out of this thing. Come on. <laughs> no, you find somebody else. No, you deep. <laughs> no, you no, you got you got everybody else. Right. I was trying to get out of right. it. Right. And that's the absolutely correct. When God has something for us to do, if, and we feel that we're not qualified right. because of our past, uh, you know, and God doesn't look at us as a past, He can take anyone and 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 shape them up to be what He wants them to be, right. and and He'll get the glory. Amen. Right. Big murder. I knew I was gonna get you going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to say, you know, it's. It's hard to ask somebody to do something and be sincere about something if they think they already know what they're doing. So that's why God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the call. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Preach it. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have anything to add to that? That's good. That's good. Uh, so the queen. Amen. Amen. He's going to get his stuff to me. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> a lot of times uh, people, they're like so insecure. Mm -hmm. And with them being asked to do something that they're not sure about, even though um, they may be willing and maybe not be willing. But I think it's just them being insecure and not um, not knowing uh, what they think they should know. Right. Amen. Very good boy for Sister Queen. And we got Sister Cassandra right behind her. And, she, and most of the time we're insecure. And, and, and that insecurity is interpreted as fear. Yes. Think about it. That's the reason why we start making all of these excuses. We're afraid. And the reason why we're afraid, right, is because we can't see every little step of what we have to go through. So we're afraid of the unknown. Yeah, you say you want me to save Israel. Mm, but how are we going to do that? God said, don't you worry about that. You let me worry about that. You just do like I asked you to do. Use the tool. It's like yes. a tool saying to the, to the, the owner, um, don't use me this way. He's like, well, excuse me. Amen. You are mine, and I, you are mine, and I will use you how I need you. And it's all fear. And that's why the Bible says he's got given us a spirit of fear. Come a on. A spirit of Amen. power. Come on. And of love. Uh -huh. And of a sound Amen. mind. Yes, I'll give that answer that you get. Sound mind. Amen. Very good point. Uh, uh, fear. And, uh, uh like, uh, I always talk about fear because I always say a lot of times people have the the this fear of failure. Yeah. Yes. That you know we yeah. we're always concerned. Right. And and I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about. I, I tell everybody all the time they don't believe me. I'm worried about no coronavirus. Come on. I ain't worried about it. Mm -mm. 
and I, God got I'm this. Free. That's right. And I'm not going to, I mean, right. I, last time I was quarantined in the bunker, we was in the combat zone. I ain't going back that way no more. Come on. <laughs> you know, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, I'm going to be out here living. Amen. Come on, man. Well, I have no, no fear. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have any comment? Pastor free. Brown. Because it's also easier to, 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 to not do it than it is to do it. Amen. And it's it also is. easier. Oh, well, you know, the pastor asked me to sing a song. No, I can't do that. It's easier. He, he, it's, and that's, and that's, that's, that's the nature of man. Yes, we right. want to take the easy right. way out. Right. You know, but, but, but when God calls us, we have to see that, that God, you know, when God calls us, we have to see that God actually chose us. Right. We see that, oh, if, 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 if we were operating what we call delegated authority through the church and the leader said, hey, I want you to do X, that's not really really and they they're a they're a spiritual person. That's not really them asking you to do something. That's right. God using right. them come on through the church body to, 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 to talk to you. Right. And, and and a lot of times, you know, pe- people don't realize I think that when they say no when the leader asks them to do something that's in line with the word. I'm not saying nothing outside of the word of God. Right. right. I'm saying something in line with the word of God. That's not really them talking, that's really God talking to them. Right. And when they say no, they're really telling God no. Right. And we can kind of grasp hold of that. Um, you know, it, I, it's not going to take nothing away from me if I'm a singer and the, the pastor asks me to sing a song. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, That's what you I'm have, qualified, but, but laughing, but, we, but because I was caught off guard. But the Bible tells us to be ye yes, also ready. We all have a ministry of reconciliation. So all of us, Come whether on. we have a title or not, are still all ministers. That's right. Amen. Amen. And we That's all have right. the capacity to bring forth something to edify, build up, and serve. Because ministry just means to serve. Right. So you got to serve through song, serve right. through prayer, serve. Yeah, serve but, 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 when you, serve but the easy way is to say, I, I can't do that. Uh-huh. You know, And, you know, Moses tried that. Right. We see it don't work. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, without belaying the moment, I'm just letting you know that the point is that we, we like to think the easy way out, but we have to step step up to the plate and watch and do what God asks us to do to the best of our ability and cast out all doubt and fear. Amen. 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 Well said. Come on, Pastor. Be, well be ready. Well said. Amen. Anyone else have anything else to add? Okay, we're going to move to verse 16. It says, uh, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianite as one man. Okay. Here he's telling them, that he's not just saying that, you know, he would do it all by himself, but he's saying that it would be done as if one man did it. Amen. Amen. And, and that is, and, and as I was reading that, it, it, was, it was telling me that, uh, Gideon don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Gideon doesn't believe in that because like you see in the verse before they say it's poor. So he's now he's got to reassure you. And like the pastor says all the time, the Bible says we have to encourage each other, Amen. one another. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes we just don't think. Like you said, we don't think that we can get up in front of the congregation of, regardless of what it is that is asking us to do. But he's being assured here now that I will be with thee. Mm-hmm. Any comments on that? Deacon Murray. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, when it says, surely I will be with thee, that's a promise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a promise. And and I've never known God to break a promise yet. Yeah, and, he, and he never will, right? Yeah, but I also understand that in our natural state man has let us down so much it's hard to all to always accept a promise even though it's coming from god you said something about reassurance we we we, we talked about insecurity mm-hmm. right we talked about it's easier to to just say no because it's easy because that's in a man's natural state but this is a promise from god mm-hmm. and so if you can wrap your head around that this is a promise you can go out and do anything, right? right? Then you start to go back to those scriptures, right? I can do all all things to Christ strength me, right? Amen. But I'm just saying, but in our natural mind, in our right. natural state, right. it is easy to to go, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, know about I don't see that happening. Right, you know? I don't see. I don't see mm-hmm. it. Just like Pastor, like De- you were saying about becoming a deacon, God gave Pastor a vision to see you where you are. Just because you didn't see it doesn't mean that it wasn't going to happen. Right. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Anyone else have anything? I, have a, I wanted to comment. I wanted to amend. 
let me amend some of the things he's saying because he's absolutely right. The Bible, this, this scripture says, he said, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Shall, in contractual language, is a promise. Mm -hmm. Just like he said. Mm -hmm. He said, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. And, and the thing that we all have to remember, going back to pastor's comments, is when the ministry, when a spiritual minister, you know, in the spirit, asks you to do something, God is at, think about it, there was an angel talking to, me, to, to Gideon. Mm -hmm. Amen. God didn't just come out in a cloud like he did Moses. He sent somebody to tell Gideon, get ready, this is what I want you to do. Yeah. It came through somebody. So when, when the ministry asks us to do stuff, and God, we we know, come on, y'all, we be knowing it out the spirit that it's really the Lord that's asking us to do it. <laughs> come on, y'all. Two no men will fall, right? Come on now. We know that, right? But the flesh won't rise up and say, no, I'm not going to say, well, I don't know. all these excuses because of fear, right? But we got to see it a different way. Let's see it the way God sees it. I'm choosing you to do this. I have confidence in you. You ask me, you sing it all the time. Lord, use me. I'm about to do that. You need to let me. Because that's what we, 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 we sing it all the time. Right? I give, we sang it last Sunday. I give myself away. Come on, y'all. We did. We said, yeah. So you can use me. So, okay, now I'm ready to do that. Okay, do you want me to use it? Do you not? Make up your mind. And why are you here? You are part of the body of Christ. You are my finger. I need you to go and lift this thing for me. That's what the fingers do. Jesus. You're part of the body of Christ. I'm asking you to do it. And the head, which is the pastor, comes to you and says, okay, finger, it's time for you to do something. Okay, mouth, it's time for you to sing something. Come on now. That you're part of the body of Christ. And he's asking, the head is going to ask that particular part of the body to do something. So we can't go around, and we do that all the time. I notice that in my own self. I'm talking out both sides of my mouth. That's what we call it, right? <laughs> well, that's what we call it, because I'm talking both sides of my mouth. I'm saying, Lord, use me. And then when the, when the pastor comes and asks me to do something that I know God's already put in my spirit to do, I'm going to start making all these excuses. Come on now, Captain, make up your mind. What you want to do? Do you want me to use you? Do you not? Do you love me? Do you not? Are you part of the body of Christ, or are you not? Amen. If you are, step up and do it. Amen. If you're not, repent. Get the Holy Ghost, then step up and do it. Amen. Amen. Very good point. Anyone else have anything to add? I got Deacon Cunningham. I feel Sister Cassandra is, is right, but I feel that uh, most 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 people are scared to get up because they're ashamed. Uh, they're scared. They, they don't know what's going to happen. So <laughs> they feel. I mean, like you up there, you up there teaching Sunday school now. I mean, the average person would get up there, they would be scared because they would look out here and see the congregation, and all eyes are on you. So they don't know if they, you don't know if they're gonna be laughing at you or they're gonna be saying something and stuff like that. So people yeah. just, they just get nervous. They just don't want to do that. I mean, if the church was full, nobody want to get up there and sing. Nobody want to get up there and teach Sunday school or anything. So the pastor would be on his own. You know, everybody <laughs> said no. I ain't caught up there. See, like you said, that that just fear. People are just scared. They right. just don't want right. to do this stuff. So right. you know, and like the, like she said, I mean, once the Lord the, the guy behind you and told you, I'm going to use you. This is what I want you to do. Then you just got to get up there and say, Well, okay, if I mess up, I mess up. But right. at least I tried. Exactly. Amen. I, I did Amen. what the Lord told I stayed me to do. That's why right. I was obedient. Mm -hmm. And he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. Amen. And very good point from everyone. Yeah. You know that it's the fear. And we're gonna move on yes. right now. Time. But I, I, I want to just add to that is that a lot of times I believe that our boss asks us to do things that we probably know that we probably can't do, but we try to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And so that's all God is asking us to do is do our best here. But we worried about who, what people's gonna say. They gonna say something anyway. Right. Don't let them talk. They don't talk. They don't talk. But I'm gonna say Amen. Okay, I'm going to read 17 and 18. It says, And he said unto him, If I now have found grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Uh-uh. Thou talkest, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I hear you, but I don't see you. But you got to show me something. You got to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it says, Depart hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee, and bring forth my presence. Set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. Okay, on 18. 
the uh, Gideon is still not sure. In other words, he's still not buying what men said. So he's saying, you got to show me a sign. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In other words, prove it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you know. sometimes I believe that Jesus Christ came down to some people in front of them thinking I'm going to try to question them for identification. I'm going to ask them where's this identification. That's what Dr. Thomas did. Instead of just leaving. That's right. Let me know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? So we we gonna only get through that. We got like five more groups, but this is such a great. Anyone has a chapter? I see you laughing over there. You must have something to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like what you say. He said he wasn't he wasn't buying what God was selling. That's right. <laughs> and that was true because he, he his his confidence was shaken. He just wasn't trying to do it uh, because he just couldn't see himself doing that. And but he but you know God has a way of, of helping us. And, and um, he said, Lord, I need to see a sign. But then my, 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 my mind went to, he said, these, these signs shall follow and believe. We right. have signs that follow and believe. God provides that. You know, we talk about fleecing God. You know, God's word is true. Not necessarily always need to do that. But sometimes, you know, we need God to, to, to help us. Yeah. Amen. To help us. I remember when I got the Holy Ghost, I asked God for a particular thing, which was kind of, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was ignorant. I, I'll, I'll admit it. I didn't know what to do. I said, Lord, you need to help me. You need, you, I asked the Lord, show me that you really want me to be saved. And then an uh, X thing happened. And I said, that had to, I said, that had to be the Lord. Right. <laughs> That's right. No one else knew what I asked. I, exactly. I asked God. Right. And if something happened, you know, and I'm like, and that night I went back to church, got the Holy Ghost. I said, okay, Lord, he helped, he helped me. Right. Yeah, he so, you know, he, yeah. he understands that he helps children and fools. Sometimes we, we childish and right. sometimes we foolish. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Anyone else have anything? Take a Yeah, just just real quick. Um, we know when that call comes, right? And like we all said, you know, we, we push, we fight, we go out kicking and screaming. But I like how the uh, the writer of, of the uh, of the lesson puts it that because we get to a point sometimes that we we know the call, we see the call, we hear the call. But it's not something that we that we want. Uh uh-uh. uh. Say it. Yeah. It's not something that we want, right? right? Uh-huh. And so we can then turn it around and confuse it and take the call to be something that we want it to be and move in the wrong direction too. Because it's a it's a self uh, a self motivating factor. Right. Oh the Lord called me. Okay, yes, he did. He did. He he called you to do X. But because you didn't see yourself doing X, you decide you want to do why. Well, you go on out there and embarrass yourself. Right. <laughs> that's what's because that's what's going to happen. And so we we can easily see how how the in the in the lesson they said, listen to this. We should be very cautious if we want something badly enough. Uh-uh. We can easily deceive ourselves right. and interpret virtually anything as a sign from above. So we got to be careful so that you know when that sign does come. You don't get to pick what your calling is, so to speak, right? Man. God's going to give you what that calling. And truth be told, you're actually walking in your calling right now. Amen. Amen. You're walking in it, and so God just is going to turn around and enhance that. Right. Thing. But it just because you're walking in it, don't mean you want to do it. Right. Amen. So. Amen. Very good point from Deacon Murray. You got to be careful about the signs. That's right. You know what I was reading? Sometimes you know we hear a lot of people say, "God, uh, place this on my heart." And so, like you said earlier, that if we tend to believe something so much and we want something so much, we'll talk ourselves into sin mm-hmm. and God told us to do this. And and actually, he didn't tell us to do it. Right. Amen. I'm going to move on. This is a great lesson. 19 and 20, I'm going to read it. So we see that uh, Gideon has asked for a sign. Now, Gideon is... Uh, it says, and Gideon went in and made ready a kid, an unleavened cake of an ephah of flour, and the flesh he put in the basket, and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. Now he's presenting this to the angel. Mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. And said, verse 20, and the angel of God said unto him, Take the flesh and the unleavened cake and lay them upon this rock and pour it out of the broth. And he did so. Amen. So it's saying right now, so Gideon is going to prepare a meal for the angel. But Gideon is getting ready for a big surprise. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. Amen. Because it, as I was reading the lesson, it says a lot of time when the, when most time when the uh, angels deliver a message, they leave. Mm -hmm. Right. And they don't yeah. hang around right. with you for this for that purpose. But it seems like for this time the uh, angel hangs around. Right. Amen. Right. And said. They said that the unleavened bread, which is uh, does not require yeast, which doesn't take long. So this is not going to take Gideon long to do all this. So my, they said that Gideon's heart was good anyway, because remember Gideon was poor. But yet still Gideon, that town said Gideon knew something about the Lord. So Gideon wanted to prepare this meal. He's pretty much convinced now. That, you know, hey, look, this, this just might be. And so... <clears throat> Deacon Merriman, was it your hand? No, sir. Anyone have a comment? 21, I'm going to say, 21, I'm going to ask, I'm going to get Deacon Cunningham to read that book. Mm -hmm. Verse 21? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then the angels of the Lord put uh, forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unlevel cake, and there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unlevel uh, cake. Then the angels of the Lord departed out of his sight. I believe that Gideon believed, believed it now. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe that he believed it now. And uh, I, well, we gotta read another verse. Yes, yes. Read yeah, yeah. 22. <laughs> <laughs> 22 for and when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, "Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face." Amen. So it says that when I was reading it, it said, you know. Uh, when it see that when you see the angel that you have seen the Lord, right? And so, so if you read further on down through the lesson, you know we know what happens if we see the Lord face to face, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's what we're going through, getting a right. mind like, oh Lord, it's right. over. Right. <laughs> it's over now. You be careful. He didn't want to ask for the sign. Amen. Amen. Right. <laughs> but you know what's also powerful here. <laughs> And all the other stories, if I cannot, if, if I'm mistaken, anytime the angel came, right? Whoever the angel came, came unto Mary, came unto whomever, they always said, fear not. Yep. Always said, fear not. Mm -hmm. But because Gideon asked the Lord and he was so so unsure and insecure by himself, it says here, when we, then uh, can I just read 23? Yeah. And the Lord said unto him, yeah. peace be unto thee, fear not. Thou shalt not die. The Lord told him this time, you know, fear not. It wasn't the angel, but I'm just saying the Lord told him. He, angel had left already, you know. Yeah. So it's just it's just amazing how uh, I think, Pastor, you said this one time that you can only imagine what what an angel probably looks like because they always come in and say fear not. So you know, is it the bright light? Is it is it an image of whatever it is? But they're always saying fear not because I, you know you're not expecting something to just. No, I, Amen. I Amen. <laughs> when it says that fear not, says you know, it said the Lord said, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not speculating on heaven. Maybe that was the only one that convinced Gideon by right. about then. So Gideon had seen something that he probably should right. say he didn't need to see, and uh, he knew a little bit about the Bible. His pastor said he knew that if he saw the Lord, that the Bible says Moses. That anyone that see by faith that, that, that shall not live. Mm -hmm. And Moses 33 and 20, I think, said that. So I believe Gideon was thinking, oh, it's over with now. <laughs> so God reassured him. Amen. Amen. Anyone have any comment before we get to the last verse? I'll, before we do that, Pastor Brown. He said he's not going to die. Right. I mean, if he told Gideon he's going to fight, and God, God's going to protect him 100%. Amen. I mean, if God said he's not going to Die, man, you're not going to die. Because right. <laughs> usually that's what that's what pulls people back to doing stuff. Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fight, but you right. know, the fear of, of war is always that I'm going to catch a, 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 a trace arrow right. or mm -hmm. a straight bullet or something. Right. And God said that's not so. So Gideon, Gideon had yeah. 
had 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 what what one of the deacons I used to grow up with. He had he had full coverage. <laughs> he had full coverage. Full coverage. Full coverage. Full coverage. Uh, Deacon sure. Williams would say, "God gives us full coverage." Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 Gideon had full coverage, y'all. Mm -hmm. To go out and do what God says, He's going to fully protect them in everything that He did. So, and we walk in that full coverage today by the blood of Christ. Amen. 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 Anyone else have anything? I'm going to ask Sister Queen to read 24 of the last verse. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day, it, unto this day, it is yet an offer of the Abitharite. Amen. Amen. And so, as we close out, if we, we know that in the lesson, it said that Gideon's father was, uh, you know, he was uh, from that, he worked under Baal. So basically what had to happen was that Gideon had to tear down the altar that his father had built. Right. And then build another altar, his own family, and build another altar for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Anyone have any comments as final closing comments? Very good lesson. I uh, guess when I close it out, when, when God called you, you can't run. Amen. Amen. True that. And, and I like when you said Gideon's father had built an altar to a false god that did not stop God from coming to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. God don't care what your parents did. When he's got work for you, he's going to call you for that work. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. His father, he, he had, Gideon, if you read on down into this lesson, Gideon ended up in these chapters, Gideon ended up tearing down his father's altar. Uh -huh. And he took the oxen that he used to plow his father's ground and he sacrificed them to the Lord. And when his father woke up the next morning, he said, Who had done this? They said, Gideon. Gideon <laughs> did it. Yokes yeah. of oxen, he did that. You know, you know, that's economically a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when God calls you, he ain't gonna worry about your lineage. Ask Rahab. Amen. Rahab the Lord, remember her? Yeah. Uh -huh. Ask her. Yeah, she ended up being in the lineage of Jesus, y'all. Come on. <laughs> God ain't gonna ask you what your parents did. He yeah. said, I got a work for you to do. And I need you to be obedient and do it. Yeah. At least try. Very good point for Sister Cassandra. As we close out, it also said that when he tore down that altar, that yeah. the people came against him. Yeah. And his dad came to a defense. Sure did. Dad Amen. came to his defense. Sure did. So, you know, God works, you know, Spirit. what we see and how we see it and when it happens. Right. Not the way God passed around. And, you know, one more point there was that everybody in Israel knew those altars were incorrect. That's right. They knew right. they were wrong. That's right. When the people come running and his dad knew what was right. Right. So, he, so, so his father, even though he was doing something wrong, at the at a moment later on in his life, he stood up and did what was right. That's right. And Amen. that and that 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 that's that's very important. I think to pull out of that lesson that mm -hmm. when they did, the people did come against them. They wanted to continue in, in their in their things, and God was trying to get them out of that. Right. And there has to be someone who has to stand up and say what is right. Yeah. And and be able to uh, declare the truth of the truth of God's word. Amen. Yeah, I just want to also say that, you know, it's amazing how this and many other stories throughout the Bible, the last three scriptures here uh, indicate Gideon began to worship the Lord. And so when God does things for us and when we go through things and all of a sudden he shows us something, we always see that, that the man or woman of God comes back to honor God and worship. Right. Amen. Amen. Very good point. Amen. Anyone else have anything? At this time, we're going to get ready for our Sunday school offering. Uh, we are going to take up two offerings, the regular offering and the scholarship funds, and ask that everyone that's uh, viewing us via the internet or Facebook, that you can contribute doing with PayPal or Givelify, or you can mail it here to the church, or you can drop it off. You can give us a call here any way that you would like to uh, contribute. Please do so during these times. We need everything. Amen. 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 Everybody ought to go to side.